Hey guys, uh, today we're going to broach uh, what could turn out to be a really interesting subject regarding pentatonics, and that is the subject of what I call artificial pentatonic scales. Uh, now, before I, I go into what these are and how to, uh, how to create them, I just want to say real quickly that it seems to me like a lot of musicians are under the spell that if you stick any set of notes together over, say, five notes, that qualifies as a scale. I am not so liberal in my definition of a scale. I believe that scales should actually follow the patterns based on what nature gave us. And from there, if you want to get creative with scales, you base it on these patterns of nature. When you see what I'm about to do, you'll get what I mean uh, when I say that. Now, um, uh, artificial pentatonics can come about in three different ways. Um, the first time I noticed that I might have to make use of an artificial pentatonic was when I changed from one chord to another. Let's say I was playing an A minor pentatonic and um, the next chord, there were one or two of the notes in the pentatonic scale didn't work against that chord and in fact sounded bad. So I thought to myself, well, if, what if I adjust the notes inside the pentatonic scale to fit that chord? I'll demonstrate that later. That's one of the um, uh, uh, uses of that. Um, the other is, uh, if you're working in the confines of a scale that nature didn't give us, let me make this clear first. We, I talked about there being three systems, the Greek modes, the major minor key system, and the blues system. Well, the, the pentatonics, as we know them, made both major and minor, um, without having, uh, being tweaked or changed in any way, only work completely with the Greek mode system. They do not work as lawfully as they would uh, in the Greek mode system as, um, I mean, they don't work lawfully inside the major minor key system. Um, to give an example of that, if I have, if I'm working inside of a chord progression that's suggestive of harmonic minor, A harmonic minor, uh, if I play A minor pentatonic or against that, now, I already said, you know, you can get away with playing a minor pentatonic in a harmonic minor setting because of the blues. And when I go into my blues series, I'll, I'll explain that even further. But basically, yes, if you have a harmonic minor chord progression, and by harmonic minor chord progression, I'll say uh, A minor, D minor to E7. That's specifically harmonic minor. Those three chords are drawn from the harmonic minor scale. Now, for A minor and D minor, the A minor pentatonic works perfectly fine. However, the A minor pentatonic has a G note in it, and when we hit the E7, the e E7 has a G sharp, all right? Uh, I already explained why it'll still work that G against the G sharp, but if you really, really want to be meticulous about it, you would adjust your A, um, a minor pentatonic, to, and every time you run across the G note, you change it to a G sharp to be fitting for that scale. So that's another um, reason... Uh, uh, that artificial pentatonics become useful. The third was just a creative idea I had. Now, uh, the the uh, minor pentatonic and the major pentatonic have di two different formulas. The major pentatonic is whole, whole, one and a half, whole, one and a half. And the minor pentatonic is one and a half, whole, whole, one and a half, whole. Um, so if we look at the C scale, at the top, we have a C scale starting with the C note, and down here we have a C scale starting on the A note. The C major pentatonic contains the first step, the second, the third, the fifth, and the sixth steps of the C major scale. Note that the F and the B, the fourth and the seventh steps are omitted. Thereby, really, you uh, eliminate the need to work with the modes when these pentatonics happen. All right, secondly, when we look at this one, we have uh, the minor pentatonic goes from A, C, D, E, G. In the C scale, that would be 1, flat 3, 4, 5, flat 7. And uh, you might ask me why flat 3 and why flat 7 when you don't actually see a flat occurring in the notes themselves. Uh, when you make any comparisons about uh, the numbering of an arpeggio or a scale, a mode, whatever, you take the first note, the root note of that, and you compare this like I'm taking the A note and comparing this A Aeolian scale to an A major scale, okay? A major scale goes A, B, C sharp. 
So compared to a C sharp, this C is a flat at third. One, two, three, A, B, C sharp in the A major scale. That C note is lower by a half step. So we call it the flat three. And it's the same with the um, flat seven here in the A major scale. There's a G sharp over here, and we have a G natural here, so we have to call this a flatted seventh. I hope that's pretty clear. Um, all right, so uh, one of the thoughts, one of the creative ideas I had was, well, what if since the formulas between the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic are completely different, this being one, two, three, five, six, this being one flat three, four, five flat seven, what if I applied the major pentatonic formula to the minor scale and the minor pentatonic formula to the major? Now, the problem here is, well, if I used um, one flat three, four, five for the C major, I'd get one natural three, and then I'd have to incorporate the four, which is F from the C major scale, and then five, and then the natural seven over here, the B note. So, but the problem here is that, well, it says flat three here. What I do with this is I just give, I give uh, the third and the seventh, okay, I, I leave it to, uh, to be generic. In other words, if the scale asks for a natural third, then use the natural third. So uh, as an example, if I take the G major scale, and I go, I apply the minor formula, which is one, three, four, five, seven. All right, now, it, it, of course, the minor says one flat three, four, five, flat seven. But again, three and seven, I'm going to leave mutable. Okay, so then I get one, three, four, five, seven, one. And to hear that in a kind of context, I'll just play some mellow two chord progression. how that's the artificial pentatonic now the thing you have to know about artificial pentatonics is no longer uh can you avoid thinking about the modes in this case and the reason why is um the modal notes four and seven uh those are the notes that change in the mode so here i'm using a natural four but if it was Lydian, I'd have to use a raise four, which indeed happens on the fourth step of the scale. Right now, I took the first chord of the key of G, I built the G scale around it, and then I went one, three, four, five, seven. All right. Now, if I take the second chord of G, A minor, and now since it's minor, I'm going to apply the major formula, which is one, two, three, five, six. And in this case, I get one, two, oh, flat three, five, flat six. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, natural six. All right. And that's sitting at the Dorian step, so obviously it would work the best with the Dorian progression. Two chord progression, I'm going to use A minor seven to D nine. using the scale tones from the key of G, calling the first note one, and uh, since this is minor, I'm transferring the major formula. Uh, major formula is one, two, three, five, six. So I'm going one, two, three, five, six uh, of the Dorian scale. One, two, three, five, six. All right. Now, the same can follow through for Phrygian, uh, for Locrian, for uh, Lydian and Mixolydian, and so on. Now, I have to admit that um, I just I kind of came up with this stuff, but I didn't study it thoroughly. So I am not really well conversant in the um, in the Phrygian, uh, which would be let me see. One, two, three, five, six. Aside from that, 
Phrygian is a weak mode, so chances are you weren't use it, wouldn't use it. But if you break down what's going on here, I get from the G major scale, I'm starting on a B note. Well, B is the third of the G major scale, and it's also the third of a G chord, chord note. So I'm going three, four, five, natural seven, one. So I get B, C, D, F sharp, G. Now, contained in that is virtually a G major seven chord. G major seven is G, B, D, F sharp. Well, I'm getting B, D, F sharp, G. And the only extra note is C. So would that work against a G major chord? You bet it would. Now, of course, as with all scales, you don't want to go up and down the scale, and that's your improv for the day. Uh, you want to mess with it, give it some rhythm, give it some melody, break up the scale a little bit, use, uh, as I taught in my last video, use sequences. You see, when you combine all these ideas, when you start to put them together, you know, people ask me, Vinny, can you show me a lick? It's like, why don't you make up your own lick? You know, here's a sequence. Here's a, an artificial pentatonic. Put the two together and come up with a lick. Okay. Now, uh, the Lydian and Mixolydian I find to be really kind of cool um, because the Lydian can function both as Lydian and Mixolydian. And since Lydian is a weak mode and Mixolydian is a strong mode, uh, I would opt to use um, the Lydian pentatonic for uh, Mixolydian as well as the Mixolydian pentatonic. All right. Now, Lydian scale is the, is the, I'm coming from the key of G here. So the Lydian scale is based on the fourth step of G and I just go up the G scale from that fourth step, which is a C note. And I got Now, if I was C rooted, that would sound a little kind of exotic. Um, adjusted our ears to see its root. Now, when you listen to the scale, you might recognize a Simpson, but that, that scale is used humorously, but it, it actually can be quite mysterious, as in George Harrison's song off of the Magical Mystery Tour album, Blue Jay Way, which is uh, strongly Lydian in its melodic content, and it's very spooky and kind of dark and surreal. So the Lydian scale, because it's so obtuse, can either sound very mysterious or it can sound kind of silly, you know, depending on how you use it. Um, all right. And uh, if now with this Lydian, again, it's a it's a major mode. So I'm applying the minor formula, which is uh, one, three, four, five, six. So I get one, three, four, five. I'm at one, three, four, five, seven. I'm sorry. <laughs> For the Mixolydian, one, three, four, five, seven. Now here the seven is flat and the four becomes natural. Now I'm going to do a Mixolydian progression as I mentioned before. I could use both Lydian and Mixolydian in that uh, Mixolydian progression. Why? Um, let me explain it real quick, okay? In the key of G, one, two, three, four, five, this, the fifth step is D7, okay? D7 is the Mixolydian mode, and when you form the scale there, it's just like a major scale, except the 7 becomes flat. Instead of, we got, so when I do the Lydian against that D7, I get the flat 7 of the G7, which is a really important note of the G7. Oh, wait, I mean of D7, I'm sorry. G7. So C is a flat seven and D seven. I get the ninth, the third, the fourth, and uh, and the thirteen, which is an interesting sound. Now this is one of the reasons why the Lydian works. I have the third and the flatted seventh of the chord, two really, really important notes of a seventh chord of the third and flat seven. Um, I may have demonstrated in the past how I can play an entire blues progression 
using simply the third and the flat seven of the blues chords and leaving the rest of the notes out, you can hear the chord movement. All right, but anyway, I'm gonna do a mixolydian progression based on the fifth chord of the key of G. Uh, classic rock tunes all over the map have this progression. So I'm gonna lay this down and use both the, the Lydian pentatonic and the uh, mixolydian pentatonic. First, the mixolydian. Isolate the sound of those scales, especially what the one I want to really point out is mixolydian. Any uh, big Beatles fans will recognize that scale. Well, it turns out the, the uh, mixolydian pentatonic is actually an Indian raga. That's the same notes of a particular Indian raka that George Harrison picked up on. And you can hear that skill really clearly in the song uh, Within You and Without You off the Sergeant Temple record. And they came up with it a few times, too. Uh, you can hear it in Strawberry Fields, this exotic Indian instrument going. All right. Uh, now, that these two scales didn't sound absolutely wonderful in that context. Um, let me just vamp on a, on a D9 chord, which is an extended D7. Uh, maybe that'll give you a clearer idea of the sound of it. example of how I tweaked the pentatonic scale, not arbitrarily, not, not for the sake of getting an exotic sound and sounding, wow, you know, I'm so outside, as the jazz players say. But no, what I'm doing is I'm using the laws of the structure of the pentatonic scale and reversing their roles from minor to major. That, to me, is a more lawful manipulation of scales um, because it's based on the very mathematics of music itself. And I think that's a fair way to tweak a scale. All right. Now, the other situation I want to bring up is, uh, all right, let's talk about uh, harmonic minor now. Uh, so the three chords of harmonic minor, uh, the one, four, and five of harmonic minor, will take a key of A. A minor, D minor, and E minor. Now, I'm just going to kind of let these chords ring as whole notes and play my pentatonic scale against each. If you want to be technical and get technical about it, you can say, well, it's not precisely harmonic minor, which it isn't. The harmonic minor in A requires a G sharp note, and my A pentatonic scale, A minor pentatonic, has a G natural note. So I thought to myself, well, what if I did my A harmonic minor scale? I mean, my A pentatonic scale, A minor pentatonic, and change all the G notes to G sharp. So I get. Now let's hear that against the harmonic minor chord progression. Mm -hmm. 
So there's another artificial pentatonic. It doesn't exist in nature, but I tweaked it. Uh, you know what? Mu does a harmonic minor, the key of a harmonic minor, so-called key of, um, is not given to us by nature. In fact, it took us to tweak the, the actual 12 notes of our chromatic scale to even be able to make that scale happen. Um, so a little bit of tweakery in music ain't so bad. I just like, I don't like, I'll give you an example. Back, uh, back in the 70s when I was going to school, I was sitting at a bar with this cello player who was a philosophical sort of guy. And he was posing that really kind of, um, at this point, stale argument that there's no such thing as dissonance. This was when the avant-garde was, you know, happening and uh, avant-garde music was becoming popular to the public. Uh, thanks really in a great part to the Beatles themselves because they were listening to the avant-garde composers and they employed things like uh, tape loops and stuff like that that were uh, used by composers like Stockhausen. So this, this is, the Beatles actually introduced avant-gardism to the mainstream awareness. Um, in any case, that point though, um, the fact that you can hear that resolution, all right, and the fact that this resolution sounds happy, well, this one sounds more serious, the very fact that you can distinguish that difference tells me that there's a difference between dissonance and consonance in music. I'm sorry, to me, that's a load of bullshit. That's like saying I could just string a bunch of letters together making non-words and talk to you for an hour. And you could go, wow, that was deep. And it didn't mean shit. All right. So I'm sorry. I don't go into, inside that intellectual manipulation thing. I don't buy it. Anyway, to move on. So that was another case. Now, the third case of using an artificial pentatonic. This is a very classic chord progression, two chord progression, A minor to F7. Or in my case, F9. Now, the problem here is that if I wanted to use as a global scale my A minor pentatonic, I'm going to have a problem against that F7, and I'll show you why. Let me lay down the loop. I have A, C, D, E, G, all right, for my pentatonic notes. My F9 chord contains F, A, C, E flat, G, okay? F, A, C, E flat, G. All right, let me uh, write this down, actually. Uh, All right, so my notes of the pentatonic scale are A, C, D, E, G, and F9 equals F, A, C, E flat, G. Now, the pentatonic does not contain an F note, so we're safe. There's no form of an F in the pentatonic. However, and the A, C, and G all fit nicely with the F9 chord. What about uh, the D note? Well, that's the 13th. That's commonly heard in an F9, in an F uh, dominant chord, especially in a setting like this. And uh, the only problem really is the E should be E flat. So what if I went A, C, D, E flat, G? And I get this. <laughs> Now let me uh, use my A minor pentatonic for the A minor chord and my tweaked A minor pentatonic 
for the F9 core. Oh, wait. Let me, I have to set up the loop again. So uh, in reality, uh, you could get away with using um, that tweaked pentatonic for both the A minor and the F7. All right, so really that wraps it up for uh, artificial pentatonics, all right? Um, they do have their uses. They have a specific kind of color uh, that you can't get out of a normal pentatonic scale, and uh, you can't get out of a normal diatonic scale, okay? So they're more like the Indian raga than they are like Western scales. And that's it for today. I hope you understood what I was trying to convey. And this may be it for the pentatonic series for a while, unless some other idea comes to me at this point. Okay, so guys, have a great day, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.